living free Robert Ferguson's got the plan you need With die free life, it's the key No more starving, getting rid of information Choosing healthy choices, providing you with sound information Bringing balance to hormones and insulin to food With the DFL, teaching you food choices to see it through DFL, we're teaching you to eat food right Teaching you to pair food with each bite Balancing our body's microbiome, feel it so right With diet free life, the health features lose All right, all right. What's up, everybody? This is Robert Ferguson, your nutritionist, a guy who shares because I do care. I care. And that's why I share. And today is no different. Today, I'm going to answer a question, or I'm going to, we're going to talk about GLP-1. GLP-1. Now, you've probably heard of GLP-1 because that is the active ingredient that's in a lot of these weight loss drugs like Ozempic, Wegovy, and the list goes on and on to, well, on and on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, today, my goal really is to, I want to establish an energy or a feeling where you feel like we're in the room together. And we're just going to have a conversation. Um, I also want to encourage you to look at the links provided below. Uh, we have a newsletter you can sign up for. It's free. That newsletter is great. Uh, I have a presentation about a product that I endorse called Balance Oil. Um, you can find out more about that. There's a free seminar. It's like 30 minutes long, but you will learn a lot about omega-3 and the importance of omega-3 and these things called polyphenols, which everyone benefits from. OK, so the presentation is there and you can check it out. It doesn't cost anything. Um, and then I wrote an article on GLP-1 and the article is basically why GLP-1 as a supplement does not work. Now, before I dive in and get into it and show you why I'm able to say that with total confidence, uh, I want to let everybody know I am not doing this video because I'm trying to hurt anybody's business. Um, I know the Kardashians, one of them is now selling a supplement that's a GLP-1 supplement. I know Noom is also selling a supplement that's GLP-1. And I know of six network marketing companies that are now promoting and selling a supplement that is GLP-1. Now, don't take it personal. And don't get in your feelings, because the reality is, if you're selling these supplements, you are, you're lying. You are outright lying to people. And if you look at my history, I always talk about things. I'm not going to spend every day talking about GLP-1. But I do want to have something that I can make available to people that they can go to and watch, re-watch, so that they are informed and they, they know the truth. See, for years, I've been telling people that most supplements that people are taking on a daily basis are doing more damage to them than doing good. Not all, because I endorse some supplements. I, I, I believe in supplementation. I think there's a place for it. But I also know the difference between when something is FDA regulated and when it's not. And the supplement industry is not. It's a self-regulated industry. And it's so unfortunate because the average person has no idea if it's a product that's going to benefit them or not. It's like I was talking to someone the other day and they were a new client. And with new clients, I like to do an inventory of their supplements. So if they're taking supplements, OK, let's look at their supplements. So as I was looking at her supplements, she was taking a multi. And my first question was, why are you taking a multi? And she just, well, I, I mean. Isn't that good for me? You know, we're not the nutrients. Like she didn't know. And then when we looked at the ingredients, one of the ingredients 
there was a synthetic version of vitamin E was connected to or linked to multiple types of cancer. Now, you may be thinking, well, Robert, if it's linked to cancer, why would it be in a in a product like that? Well, here's the deal. And this is part of our time today. OK. When it's self-regulated, like the supplement industry is. They don't have to prove that it's safe before they start selling it. And it can stay on the shelves and continue to be sold until somebody dies or there's clear proof that this supplement is causing some harms, right? Kidney damage, liver damage, it's, it's cancer. And then there's going to have to be a lawsuit. And then it's going to take time. And then who's going to like do the lawsuit? Are you going to come out of your pocket and do it? So it takes it takes forever, if ever, to get rid of certain ingredients and supplements. And I feel like this is a total injustice because it's been proven time and time and time again that a lot of supplements are doing more harm than they are good. That's why I'm a true believer in test-based nutrition. I'm not going to go into great detail, but if you want to learn more about that, I also made available a link where you can get a free consultation. You can share with me whatever you want to share with me. But today we're going to talk about GLP-1. And I'm going to do my best to get through this as fast as I can. Again, you don't even have to take notes because I wrote the article. The link is below. You can click on it and read it. You can take it to your company and say, hey, and send them my video and say, hey, this guy who's an evidence-based, uh, clinically proven nutritionist is saying that these supplements in the form of GLP-1 or however they want to spin it are not good. They're not real. And you may be saying, oh, yeah, well, we did clinical trials. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You didn't have third parties involved. I would love to see the protocols of that. And I'm sure the white papers will be made available. And then maybe it's published. I would love to see any of that. But here's the deal, you guys. What you're going to learn when it comes to GLP-1. GLP-1 is a hormone that is naturally produced in the gut. And I'm going to show you some images of it so you can see exactly where it comes from. So it naturally is produced. When they came out with these weight loss drugs with GLP-1 and talking about GLP-1, it started getting popular. Well, I've been studying GLP-1 and GIP since 2010, like a lot. And I have data that goes all the way back to when they first discovered it. I'm talking about going to 1900. And, of course, the real moments when they were looking at bariatric surgery, when they discovered this for the most part, and doctors got involved and pharmaceutical companies got involved, uh, when they saw the potential benefits of tampering with GLP-1 uh, or avoiding the secretion of GLP-1, and then it got to where it is today. And now all of a sudden, companies are coming out with a new weight loss program, sugar regulator, this GLP-1, and it is such nonsense. To me, all these companies that are network marketing companies that are pushing GLP-1, that is a prime example why I don't work with most of them. It is absolutely ridiculous. And because most people don't know any better, they're not educated. They're not clinical like clinicians. They don't, they don't even know what an evidence-based clinical study really is. They can't even tell you the difference between the various types of studies. They just listen to the top. They listen to the leaders. And if a new product comes out, they get excited and hope that their leaders are being honest with them. And they're not. See, when I was behind this product that was called Liquid Collagen that I endorse, still endorse. It's a great product, 100%. I happen to know the man who did all the, who discovered it, who put it together. And then I ended up being on the science board of this company because I knew at that moment in time with the CEO they had in place, the efficacy was in place. I believed it. Now, they had other products that I would never, ever use myself or recommend to anybody because the company had been around for a long time, but the liquid collagen was legit. And there's legit studies, published studies on the liquid collagen. You can't, you can't deny the efficacy of the liquid collagen. But when companies need more money, they need to come up with something, they just, they get reckless. And if everybody else is doing it, from the Kardashians to Noom to all these other network marketing companies, 
People don't know any better. They're not teaching you how to eat. They're not guiding you step by step on how to use food to maximize or optimize GLP-1 because that is how you optimize it, food. But they're not teaching you that. They're not selling that, which they could. And we almost did. I mean, I was working with the CEO of this company. We were going to make it where there's a program available that teaches people how to eat. It's what I've been doing for nearly 30 years now. All right. Anyway, I'm starting to get off focus. From this. So I printed out the article. And if you click on the link, then you can follow me. We can go over it. Um, and then I'll end on the Courtney Kardashian has a product out that's GLP-1. All lies. I mean, absolutely. Just, I mean, just outright lying to people. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's just it's, it's mind blowing to me. And the sad thing is that you people don't know any better. You know, fortunately, you've come across me or you're connected. I'm not going to sell you out. I'm going to tell you the truth. It is what it is. And I'm laughing every time I watch these people on social media promote these GLP-1 supplements because they are outright lying to you. Like 100%. It's just sad. Okay. <laughs> anyway, let's get into it. And, for, and some of those people don't know any better. So if they get a chance to listen to this, maybe they'll sell the other products and just say, you know what? I got to stand for something instead of just jumping on board and selling and getting people excited. I get it. It's your livelihood. And it's kind of sad. It really is because uh, the company should have been vetted. They should have done more work to come up with something better. And again, the trials that they're talking about are it's like, let's just get into it. OK, so as you'll see. Um, GLP-1 is glucagon-like peptide 1. And I'm going to show you pictures so that'll save us time. But the first thing I want you to know is that GLP-1 is naturally secreted in our bodies. And the drugs are using it. It's called GLP-1 agonists. The supplements are not the same thing that's in the drugs. With most of the supplements, they are saying it's not GLP-1, but it stimulates the secretion or production of GLP-1. That would be the claim. And I would love to see their studies on that. Um, and stimulating GLP-1 is not always a good thing. That's the other thing that they're not telling you, which I'm going to bring that home today. Now, GLP-1, it is broken down when, you know, it's in our bodies um, by enzymes. And these enzymes break it down, meaning that they don't last very long and they definitely wouldn't last long enough to get you the benefit. So if someone's selling a potion, powder, all that stuff, run from them. All right. So I put together a little presentation. All right. Can you see that? OK, GLP one, everybody. And if you have questions, just bring them. I will answer your questions. I don't care. I'm just going to tell the truth. OK, I'm going to tell the truth. And again, feel free to share this with any of your scientists. They can reach out to me if they want to do an interview. Uh, we can just have a real nice conversation about it. I would love to do that. Uh, make sure they do their homework because uh, it may not go well. So I don't expect anyone to want to have the conversation with me who are compromised. They're selling a product. They won't do it. They won't do it. They'll just let it go. Now, I want you to see in this slide right here, I just kind of highlight the gut microbiome. So the gut microbiome, and this is information you want to know before you really can understand GLP-1. The gut microbiome begins in your mouth and goes all the way to your anus, your bum. Everything between the mouth and the bum, that's the gut microbiome. And as you can see on this slide, at the very top, it says that the gut microbiome is now looked at as the second brain. My point here is that the gut microbiome is very important for health, right? Serotonin, which many people think is produced primarily in the brain, that's the feel good stuff, right? When someone's dealing with depression, they'll take, you know, um, depression meds um, because of the serotonin. Well, over 90% of serotonin is produced in your gut. Your gut is important. I've watched many of my clients get their guts in better balance and no longer need to be on antidepressants. Uh, dopamine, 50% is produced in the gut, and 70% of your immune system is your gut. Your gut influences how calories are burned, and it's a primary driver for insulin response, like insulin being secreted in your gut. We're talking about your gut. 
Insulin is not, not secreted in the gut. It's from your pancreas. But your gut, which I'm going to show you in slides, plays the bigger role in how much insulin gets secreted. So I'm bringing this up because I want you to understand the importance of gut health. It is very, 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 very important. Like it should come before everything. If you have cancer and you're going to be going through chemo, talk to someone like me that can help you out with your gut. If you have any challenges with your health, you got to address the gut. If you're not, whoever you're talking to, they are, they're letting you down. So the gut is important. So we know that. Let's keep it moving. Now here, oh, this is this thing called hyperinsulinemia. I want you to know this, and I'm going to make this a little bigger for you so you can see it. Okay, notice on the right, the image I have, it says insulin resistance, and it's tied into everything from type 2 diabetes, uh, heart disease, obesity, migraines, dementia, uh, erectile dysfunction, fatty liver. See, when you have elevated insulin in your body, elevated insulin, and if it's ongoing, that is the primary driver for all of these conditions. And one of the saddest things ever is that your doctors are not talking to you about this. Before you were a type 2 diabetic, you had elevated insulin. Before you had high blood pressure, there's a very strong likelihood you had elevated insulin. Before you had PCOS, you had elevated insulin. Many people are walking around with elevated insulin and their doctors are not doing a fasting insulin test. It's, I mean, it's starting to become a little common. But I mean, maybe I would say less than 5% of doctors will test fasting insulin. So insulin, my stress point here is the primary driver. The thing I want you to really understand, because once you understand insulin, you're going to better understand my concerns around GLP-1. Okay. Insulin is the primary driver for a whole bunch of problems. Okay, a whole bunch of problems that people experience. And when we coach people, we coach people understanding that, yes, we want to look at glucose, but we also want to help people understand the role of insulin. Because insulin, if you get that under control, then you automatically have glucose under control. But most people aren't even thinking about insulin. They're only thinking about glucose and everything else. So they're chasing the effects instead of reversing the cause. Okay, so let me give you an example. Okay, as you can see in this picture right here, okay? In this picture, we did a survey with 100 people. I've done this now. I've asked this question I'm about to ask you for I've, thousands of people. But the first 100 were doctors, nurses, dietitians, uh, personal trainers, uh, metabolic like gurus, I mean, uh, health enthusiasts, uh, community healthcare workers. We surveyed them and we asked them the question, which of these two foods will cause the greater insulin response? And every time they always say the fruit. And every time they are wrong, the number one driver for insulin in this situation would be the hamburger patty because the hamburger patty is, is the way it's processed. And the fruit is still in its natural state. The further a food is away from uh, its natural state, the more is likely to cause insulin to be elevated or secreted at high levels. Like if you take whole milk and compare it to non-fat milk and you look at the insulin response, the non-fat milk uh, secretes 300 times or 300 percent more insulin than the whole milk because the whole milk is still whole. When they take it through the process and strip the whole milk and, and get it down to non-fat milk, it actually causes more insulin. See, if you go back to 1977, since 1977, every year we have more obesity, more heart disease, more health, chronic illnesses, every year continuously rising. And if you go back to 1977, you would realize it, it was at that time that there was this huge shift it was a huge shift in reducing fat in almost everything that we were eating. And as a result of doing that and of the, the, the mass manufacturing of food from chicken to turkey, et cetera, it put us in a situation where we're just deficient in certain things. And we're driving up the insulin. The insulin is the primary reason why so many of you are challenged. So the correct answer 
would be the hamburger patty. Now, if I were to remove the hamburger patty and put a steak there, then this, it would be a complete different answer. Okay, so insulin is our problem. Now, if you look at this slide right here on the left, you're looking at 50 grams of uh, apple juice and 50 grams of, of an apple. And if you look at the glycemic index, which is only looking at the sugar response, the glucose response, they're basically the same. But on the right, if you look at the insulin response, it's significantly different. This is why it's always best to eat the fruit instead of drinking the fruit. There's a lot of people out there drinking, you know, celery juice, and they feel like they're making progress, but they're just secreting more insulin, which that is going to just take them to a place where more problems are going to show up. And they're going to wonder why, because they've been drinking celery juice. So now we're at the part where I want to really dig down and show you exactly how it works. Okay. In my article that I made available, all you got to do is read it. At the end of the day, when it's a supplement form, a supplement form, they're either going to say it works just like GLP-1, or they're going to say it can activate more GLP-1. Well, if I eat avocado on cottage cheese, I'm going to 100% activate GLP-1. If I eat steak with eggs, I'm going to activate GLP-1. If I'm consuming polyphenols, right, in all your colorful fruits and vegetables, I'm going to activate GLP-1. So GLP-1 is, is taking place inside the gut. So let me show you exactly what I mean by this. And if you are following me, you understand that elevated insulin is the main problem some people, if the product does what they say it does, well, it's, not it's, it's, it's going to cause insulin levels to be elevated. And when insulin levels are elevated, that's not a good thing. That leads to insulin resistance and a whole bunch of other problems. One of the main goals in the way we teach people how to eat, a food as medicine approach and not a supplement approach, is to use food as medicine. You know, in the words of Hippocrates, he said, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. He also said that all disease begins in the gut. Well, knowing that, let's look at the gut. I believe I've shared a little bit of information to help you realize the importance of what's taking place in the gut and everything that you put in your body. You want to be thinking about how is it going to impact my gut? How is it going to impact my gut? What role is it going to play in my gut? And what we've been saying, and if you haven't heard, like, for instance, if you're taking probiotics, most probiotics are creating uh, damage, dysbiosis, a dis, uh, uh, imbalance inside of your gut. So here you are taking probiotics, thinking it's helping you. You would be so much better off to eat fermented foods uh, or take a prebiotic because a prebiotic will fuel the live bacteria in your gut. And then you can get the benefit of what they call a postbiotic. We're doing a lot of things wrong because we're talking to the wrong people. So these people who start pushing GLP-1, they are lying to you. They are lying, outright lying. And I wish people could go to jail for these kind of lies, but they can't. I mean, they sold a Fedra for years. Nobody went to jail. There's a lot of supplements that have caused harm. And then eventually enough people get kidney damage, enough people have negative experiences, then they shut it down. Who knows when that's going to happen? Maybe it won't happen to you. Maybe it'll work out for you. But are you really benefiting from what you're consuming? Are you really benefiting? Well, let's look at this. Okay, As you can see, at the very top, you have the stomach. So when you eat food or drink food, right, it goes into the stomach. And once it leaves the stomach, it goes into your small intestine, your small intestine. So I'm going to make this a little bigger. I want you to, I want you to see. Okay. Well, that's the best I can do. I can't zoom in. So the food goes into the stomach. And then at the top of the stomach, where I have that arrow, you have a dense population of these K-cells. So when you read through my article, you'll see I talk about K-cells. These K cells are at the top of the small intestine. And those K cells, they produce, let me see here. 
uh, there's a K cell. So you see the red K cells and it's pointing at that teardrop. It's like a horizontal teardrop. Um, that's a K cell. And the K cell, when activated, will produce these incretins, um, these hormones, these peptides called GIP and GLP. Those are hormones. And depending on what you eat depends on how much of these incretins are, are secreted. And the fascinating part about these incretins is they play a huge role in communicating to that thing to the left there. That's your pancreas. Your pancreas is not located inside of your intestinal tract. Your pancreas is located <clears throat> outside of it, but through this thing called the enteroinsular axis, the incretins will communicate, and remember incretins are GLP-1 and GIP, they will communicate to the pancreas and tell the pancreas how much insulin to secrete. So the further food is from nature. So if I ate some potato chips, because they're processed, I'm going to have way more incretins uh, or insulin being secreted than if I were to consume a potato. Has nothing to do with the amount of carbs. It has everything to do with these incretins. And these incretins play a huge role for a whole bunch of things, right? Because you have receptors all over your body. So if someone's taking something that is causing a constant secretion of these incretins, which means more insulin circulating in the body, then we're going to have a problem. Now, you may be thinking right now, okay, Robert, I hear you, but how is it that people get on these drugs like semaglutide or Ozempic, for instance, and they lose weight? Well, part of what GI, GLP-1 does is that you have receptors in your brain, you have receptors in your heart, you have receptors all over your body for GLP-1. And when GLP-1 taps into those areas like the brain, through our hypothalamus or the central nervous system, you're not hungry. So the people who are on these drugs, the drug does not cause you to lose weight. It causes you to not be hungry. And it can slow down gastric emptying, meaning food can stay inside your body. Like So a lot of people who are on these drugs have bad breath because they got food that's staying inside of their digestive system way longer than it would normally stay in there. Uh, and that's when it starts getting into a whole bunch of other problems. And it plays a huge role in the hormone called glucagon. So you have insulin and glucagon. They both come from the pancreas. Insulin's job is to bring down glucagon that's floating around in your body. When insulin's not present to bring it down, glucagon goes up, which means you have higher blood sugar. So these are big parts of how the GLP-1 drugs work because it helps to keep the glucose down. You're not eating, then insulin's down, right? But if you're taking something that's going to stimulate the production of GLP-1, okay, natural GLP-1, then why are we secreting it when I could just eat? So are you not eating? Which then leads to other problems. So it's one of these supplements or drugs is, is so framed around a lie that is actually, it's hard to even talk about it because it does not make sense. There is no lifestyle intervention or therapies being promoted at all. You just got some people taking more supplements, more things going into your gut, more things going across those K cells, more tablets, more capsules, more plastic, more petroleum, more gelatin. Why? Because they tell you that it's going to help you lose weight or control your blood sugar. Does the way you eat play any role in that? Of course. But you can't sell easily or make money easily based on nutrition knowledge. And it's all based on another product being sold. And then that's going to get more attention. So again, when you read the article, if you have a hard time, do a free consultation with me and I can answer any questions that you may have. But this is how it works, you guys. This is it.
you're stimulating more insulin. And if it's doing its job the way the claims are, then yeah, you may be thinking it's working for you, but then you're going to like show up with all these other problems. It's, we're putting too many foreign things in our body and everybody's just too quick to say, we got the new solution. We got the new solution. And there's a, and a lot of it is based on lies. So what bothers me the most is how they are saying GOP one, you know, you don't got to take the drugs. We have a natural way of doing it. Give me a break. You're just lying. Outright lying to people. And the ones who are selling GLP-1, like Kardashian, I think it's just, it's just, Noom is now getting in it. So they have their regular promotion of Ozempic, and they see people are starting to move away from it. And someone said, hey, we should come out with a supplement. So now all these companies are pushing a GLP-1 supplement. Like all of them. Like it's like, this just comes out of nowhere. Because they see the opportunity, the land grab, and it's about, let's get, we can sell this now. And this will like help us take things to the next level. And people are so in need of help that they are gullible and they'll just buy it. You know, I mean, like what, not long ago, I saw someone had a supplement and they were saying how you take this supplement and it will convert carbs that you eat into dietary fiber. And people are believing that. Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about you, but that is just not going to happen. That's why you don't see biologists and people coming forward saying, yes, this is it. This is the, this is the product that I want to get behind. That's why when I got behind the balance oil with the omega-3s and the polyphenols and then seeing the science of it is like the most legit Supplement, I well, it's the most legit supplement that I've seen, like easily. Okay, so I'm gonna read a little bit. So let's let's just have a moment. Actually, I'm gonna play a little video for you because, and I'm jumping because at one point we're talking about GLP-1 supplement, and then I'm also talking about GLP-1 agonists, the drugs. Then you have GLP-1 that naturally happens which I teach my people how to eat to activate GLP-1 through food, through food. Doesn't that feel better or sound better than to say, take a supplement and here's a supplement. Come on. I mean, now another thing that, you know, and I don't want to, my goal was not to be go too scientific to that. I just wanted to give you like a little bit of a visual. I'm going to play a video for you from a scientist named Dr. Ben Bickman. Uh, he's probably, in my opinion, I would say the leading authority in the world when it comes to insulin resistance. Um, smart guy. He's a professor in Utah, um, travels the world now. Um, and he exposes and talks about something that I've talked about as far as GLP-1s, that with the GLP-1, when people start to drop the weight, you start looking at the fat cell itself and you have big fluffy fat cells that are like the dangerous ones that aren't good for us, hypertrophy. And then you have the smaller fat cells that duplicate. Well, what science has demonstrated through multiple studies is that through the drug GLP-1 agonists, you have smaller fat cells, but over time you have more fat cells. Now, the reason why it's important to hear that is that if you ever get off of that drug, the enzyme that kept those fat cells from to, to staying small is no longer there to do that. So they all grow. So people tend to gain more weight and then some. And then because of the excess body fat, you have increased risk of cancer, increased risk of cardiovascular disease. And they're not telling you that. And then you have the whole list of all the side effects that people got to go through. So he does a really good job. So I'm going to I'm going to show you this video. This is Dr. Ben Bickman explaining what happens to the the cells, the fat cells when you're on these drugs and why people would benefit from knowing this. Um 
because no one's telling them. Because once they come off the drug, which a large majority of people do after a year, um, well, they're gaining weight in a big way. And then they're experiencing a whole bunch of negative side effects. I know this firsthand because I'm now consulting companies that are having some real challenges with people that like their members or clients who, who got on those drugs once they got off, a whole bunch of like negatives are taking place. And we're working really hard to help control it, if that makes sense. Well, anyway, this is Dr. Ben Bickman talking about the fat cells. Okay, check it out. These GLP-1 agonists has been shown directly to help prevent fat cell hypertrophy through activating a process called fat cell hyperplasia, which is a technical term for just telling fat cells to start multiplying. So now what, rather than having bigger fat cells, we actually start reproducing our fat cells, which allows the bigger fat cells to share some of that fat burden with some of the newly born fat cells. So the collective result of this is that there are more fat cells, but they're smaller. And the net effect is a reduction in fat mass, but a smaller fat cell is an insulin sensitive fat cell. And as we follow people on GLP-1 agonists for up to 24 months, what was a control of cravings starts to go away. At around two years in, cravings start to come back naturally on their own. And we now have more fat cells than we did before and less muscle mass. So we have a reduction in overall energy expenditure or metabolic rate, and we have more fat cells than we did before, and we have cravings returning. We can see the problem now. The risk of them gaining all their weight back is exceptionally high, of course, and even gaining a material excess because they now literally have potentially more fat cells than they did before they ever started the drug, all while they have lost muscle and bone mass. And while it is very easy for a human to gain fat mass over their life as they age. Well, it's not just me saying it. There's a whole bunch of people saying it. So if the Kardashians are coming out with a GLP-1, look at the marketing. Like it says, what is GLP-1? And then it says GLP-1 is a hormone produced in the gut after eating that's responsible for. Okay. Is GLP-1 a hormone produced in the gut? Yes. I just showed you where it's produced by the K-cells. So they're telling the truth. Then it says it helps with or responsible for regulating glucose levels. It does play a role in regulating glucose. That's true. Managing appetite. Yes, it helps suppress a person's appetite. If you're taking a GLP-1 drug, that's what it naturally does, whether I'm using food or whether I'm using the drug. Supporting fat metabolism. Yes, because insulin is an anabolic hormone, plays a huge role in controlling uh, are dictating how energy is, is experienced inside of the cells to include storage. So insulin drives us to gain some body fat. So yes, so they're telling the truth, but they're talking about a supplement. They're not even referring to the drug. So it's like uh, they do this a lot. They'll reference the benefits that people get with the drug and say that their supplement does, basically without saying it, they're saying it. And then you pick it up and go, oh, man, instead of getting on that drug, I'm going to do a natural thing and buy this supplement. And then you think that that's OK. That means you got hoodwinked and bamboozled. This is why I don't just do any kind of supplements. You know how you like you watch people in network marketing one month, they're with this company, the, the, the next year they're with another company. You know, it's like. And I get it. And they build their business and they're stuck. You know, someone asked me earlier today, they said, so Robert, if the company that you, the product that you endorse, the Balanced Oil, if they came out with a GLP-1 um, supplement, would you stay with the company? And my answer was, yeah. But they better never ask me to endorse or speak about the GLP-1. So I wouldn't leave my company. But from an integrity standpoint, I would have nothing to do with that particular product. Now, the company that I'm with, they would, I can't imagine them doing that because some of their lead scientists are not fans of 
supplements. They're fans uh, of science and really doing their due diligence to make sure people are going to benefit from what they make available. And that's why the company evolved into what they call a test-based nutrition company, because they use medical, basically testing, scientific testing to prove that the product is working. There's no guessing. There's no, I think I feel better. Oh, I think I'm going to. No, like real legit testing. And other companies don't got that. Like you're taking a multivitamin, assuming it's working. You don't even know it's working. And most of you taking a multivitamin is causing more damage. I know because I look at a lot of my clients' products. I'm like, nah, I would toss that. Nope, toss that one. Nope. Then they go, well, why? And then I explain why. If the product's good, I'm going to be like, yeah. So if they were doing liquid collagen, I go, yeah. I mean, let's look at it. I mean, if it's good, it's good. The balance oil, uh, yeah. Never seen a product more effective than the balance oil. I haven't. Uh, so then in this article, or what the Kardashians are promoting, it says, when we eat, GLP-1 signals fullness, supports insulin production. Not always. That's a lie. And even the companies like Ozempic and Wegovy, they should, they should change that. But no one's arguing about it. And the reason why I'm saying it's a lie is because they have done multiple tests on the three different macronutrients to see which one causes the greater GLP-1 production. Uh, if you ate pure fat, boom. If you had uh, pure protein, you're going to get a little, I mean, not as much benefit as far as GLP-1 benefit. And if it's like ultra processed carbs, ah, probably not, you know, the benefits aren't really there. Um, however, whenever GLP-1 is up, there's a good likelihood, especially if you're taking in more than your body would naturally bring in. And if it's in addition to food, now you're putting yourself in a situation where you have insulin circulating in the body. This is called hyperinsulinemia. And in a in due time, that shows up, as I mentioned earlier, migraines, type 2 diabetes, blood pressure is high. Uh, you may even lose weight. And next thing you know, you're like, wait a minute, why is my blood pressure up? Um, so there's negatives. But when you read articles, they're selling a supplement, but they're talking about what it naturally does. That's the lie. That's the part that drives me totally crazy is they're talking about what it naturally does, and then they're kind of uh, uh, insinuating that their product does that or some of that. Um, and that's the part that just makes my stomach turn. Um, so so the Kardashians are on it. Noom is on it. I mean, I can't even, this stuff, I can't even read it. It drives me crazy. Read, read the, the article that I wrote. And if you want to give GOP one supplements a shot, help out Noom, the Kardashians, and all these network marketing companies that are just pushing lies, then hey, that's on you. If you want to stay in denial, hey, to each his own. Um, you talk to someone long enough, their excitement will pull you right in. Next thing you know, you're doing that when you could have used that money, used that time to learn how to eat. I mean. 29 plus years, I've been all about food as medicine before that was even a term being used and tossed around because I know that most things can be improved by learning how to eat. And you may be thinking, well, what about our soil? And we're not getting enough. Okay. Glyphosate, there's a lot of things that are in the soil and a lot of the products that we're consuming. But remember, since 1977, every year, we have people who are more obese as a country. We have more people dying, higher percentage of people dying from heart disease, higher percentage of people with colon cancer, higher percentage of people like with chronic illness. Right now, according to Tufts University, 93% of all adults are not metabolically fit. That means only 7% of adults are metabolically fit. Now, some of you don't have weight to, to lose. You look fit, 
but I would bet you everything that you're deficient in omega-3. I would put everything on that because we know. I can't tell you how many people I have tested that are women 40, 50, 55, lean, look great, look fit, body fat slow. I mean, you would say, man, they probably need to gain five or 10 pounds. We do their uh, omega tests and they're deficient in omega-3. Walking around and have no clue. None. And you watch all these people, sudden deaths, all these problems. A lot of them could be avoided if they weren't deficient in omega-3. That's that's a real supplement because you're supplementing and giving someone something that they're not getting naturally. And it would be very difficult to get it naturally, right? People are not going to eat fish every day. People are not going to go out of their way and make sure they're, they're eating. Now, you can, and you would probably need to eat fish like multiple times, like some days twice in one day. Or eat other foods that are extremely rich in omegas in order to not be deficient. That makes sense. That's why I fell in love with the balance oil because here you are, you're deficient. And when I meet someone and they understand the importance of omega-3 and they don't do something about their situation so they're no longer deficient, if they choose not to take in something like that, like the balance oil, I do lose a little respect for them because that means they're either kind of stupid and I'm not being mean, I'm just telling you, that's how important omega-3s are in our body. And the balance between omega-6 and 3 is. We're consuming way too much omega-6. We know that compounding over years, when they do a biopsy on, a, on, a, on, on the fat, they can see inside of the fat how much omega-3 we have. And those numbers should be really low. Um, or the ratio of six to three, it should be tighter, but you find out that you have way too much omega-6. That's where I was going. And when you have way more omega-6, it's creating an imbalance on a cellular level that shows up in a lot of things. And I would argue from skin conditions to gout to lupus, and the list goes on and on. Behavior. So anyway... I am not a fan of GLP-1 supplements, if you hadn't figured that out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think it's a disgrace. And I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time talking about it. I will watch people sell it. They got to make their money. And I feel for those of you who don't know any better. I, I really do. Um, but to each his own, as they would say. So give it your best shot. You know what I mean? Uh, any questions for me, you guys? I mean, I went over it. You heard from Dr. Ben. It's an interesting world that we are living in right now. And um, I know that most people want to be healthy. I do. I get that. And one of the worst things that can ever happen is when you stop everything you're doing, you pay close attention, you buy into a supplement. And there are some that are good out there, but I'm saying most aren't. And you start taking that supplement only to find out that you wasted your money. I see that a lot. This is my gift. It's my profession. It's my academic study. Um, I can't tell you how to fix cars. That's not what I do. But when it comes to nutrition um, and learning how to use food to help you get to where you most want to be, so you can maximize life on this earth, I can contribute to that. And I can give you sound advice when it comes to supplementation. That's why I'm taking time to mention this. And for all those people who sell GLP-1, I will meet many of them and I will ask them questions when I sit down with them, knowing that I'm going to take them to school and help them wake up. And hopefully they wake up and go, you know, I was going to sell it, or I'm selling it, but I'm not going to sell it. And then I would say, go do your own research. Dive in. I'll give you, like when you saw that 
PMED. Um, that was a citation that supports everything that I was talking about that takes place inside of the gut. So I cite everything that I share. That's what makes us evidence-based. And then we do our own clinical trials, real clinical trials. We have third parties involved. So there's no one bias. You know, not like when Dr. Atkins did his first clinical trial, he paid for it and they did it. So people can fudge things, you know what I mean? So a real solid clinical trial, those are those are not easy to, to get done. But if you get the right people and you have the right amount of money and time, you can get it done. So if someone's done a clinical trial and you value what I've shared, email it to me. I'll look at it, I'll look over it. And if I'm wrong it, on anything, I will raise my hand and I will say, I was wrong. I'm okay with being wrong because that means I just learned something that I didn't know. Anyway, what's up, Sandy? I'm glad you caught me on this. Um, I share some information. The details are in the article that I wrote. And let me look at the article that I wrote because I talked about step. There was eight points that I made. One was GLP-1 is broken down quickly. So in the body, GLP-1 is rapidly degraded by enzymes. Uh, and and over-the-counter supplements, usually in capsule or powder form, are subject to the same enzymatic uh, breakdown, meaning they don't last long enough to provide any real benefit. Lack of bioavailability. When GLP-1 is taken as a supplement orally, it is broken down in the digestive system like any other protein. This breakdown prevents enough active GLP-1 from entering the bloodstream to have significant impact on metabolic processes, making oral supplements ineffective. That's cited. I can show you the data on that. Three, GLP, uh, GLP-1 receptors are found throughout the body, right? So you have GLP-1 uh, receptors. That means that when GLP is floating around the body, when it finds a receptor, that's like a door. Same as way like insulin works, right? And insulin is a peptide, if you didn't know. And then it'll go right to that receptor. And if it bounds, binds with that receptor, then signaling takes place and certain things can take place inside of those cells. So GLP-1 receptors are widespread, not only in the pancreas, but also in the brain, the heart, and the gut. I mean, I don't know about you, but if something is, that's, is you know, doesn't have FDA regulated like studies around it in years, if it really is connecting with receptors on my heart, like GLP-1 receptors on my heart, you don't have any evidence that, you know, 10 months of taking something daily um, may play some role in, in, in creating harm. You have no idea. I've shared this with doctors and they all just stared at me because they, and then they agree. They go, oh yeah, we don't know. Like no one knows. And with all these people getting all these different cancers and dying suddenly, I mean, who knows what's causing a lot of this stuff that's taking place. It's kind of scary. Um, I go on to say that oral supplements lack the sophisticated delivery system needed to activate these receptors across the body, reducing their uh, efficacy. Number four, GLP supplements cannot stimulate K cells in the small intestine. So how is it, if it's a supplement, how is it activating the K cells? When all of the data says GLP-1 supplements cannot now, I would, I would be willing to argue that a little bit because certain things, when it goes across those K-cells in the small intestine, can stimulate GLP-1. But all of the data says it can't. See, K-cells in the small intestine naturally secrete GLP-1, which we talked about, in response to food, uh, particularly fats and proteins. Uh the natural secretion occurs in response to nutrient signals in the gut, which supplements bypass. Because GLP-1 supplements don't engage the digestive system's K-cells. So I would bring up the K-cells if you're talking to any one of these companies that are selling these products. They And it says that, uh, I mean, I wrote this, they, they fail to initiate the natural release of GLP-1 as food does. Number five, GLP-1 stimulates insulin release 
from the pancreas? Well, we know that. It's the primary driver for insulin response, even better than sugar being or like even injecting glucose right into your veins. One of the key functions of GLP-1 is to stimulate the pancreas to release insulin. While this is crucial for regulating blood sugar levels, sustained or excessive GLP-1 activity, such as through prescription medications or overuse, can lead to excessive insulin secretion, a condition known as hyperinsulinemia. Woo! Chronically high insulin levels may contribute to insulin resistance, a condition in which the body cells become less responsive to insulin. Imagine taking a supplement. And three years from now, you find out that's what caused you to have insulin resistance. Boy, that would be sad. Prescription GLP-1 medications are more effective. We do know that. And we also know all the side effects because there's many of them. And number seven, I speak to unknown long-term effects of synthetic GLP-1. While synthetic GLP-1 medications are effective in the effective their side effects, their long-term impact remains uncertain. That's the question where doctors all go, oh, we don't really, well, we'll find out. Well, I don't want to be a test case for people. Um, I, I wouldn't want you to be one either. Prolonged activation of GLP receptors and chronic insulin secretion may have unforeseen consequences, such as the, the development of insulin resistance or other metabolic disorders. And last, lack of regulation and efficacy. Over-the-counter GLP-1 supplements are not as strictly regulated as prescription medications. This raises concerns about their safety, efficacy, and even the authenticity of the ingredients. Without proper regulation and formulation, which is all supplements, these supplements fail to deliver the intended benefits and can't replicate the body's natural processes for GLP-1 secretion and action. Nothing can do that better than food. Nothing works GLP-1 better than food. So learn how to eat. We teach you how to eat. That's our whole thing. Get with me or one of our other coaches and learn how to combine foods in the proper way, proper combination, right amounts, and get the benefits so you're not counting on getting benefits from a bottle, a supplement. You're getting it from food. And then when you supplement, like with vitamin C or vitamin D or zinc, those are three great supplements that everyone can benefit from. And it looks like the bioavailability and all that works better. Now, I do know that when you take in vitamin or you take in zinc, make sure you're consuming polyphenols. If you're not consuming polyphenols, like, you know, colored vegetables and, and fruit, et cetera, with the zinc, it ain't getting absorbed. Same as if you're not taking your vitamin D with some type of fat, it ain't getting absorbed because vitamin D is a, a fat-soluble vitamin. So food is playing a huge role in even doing the supplements. I mean, let's get with it, people. Let's get with it. Okay. All right. I think we're done. What's up, Cindy? I'm glad you caught me. All right, you guys. Have a good one. I will be back manana. Again, my name is Robert Ferguson. I share because I care. And I don't give two cents about how anyone feels when I'm sharing the truth. But if I said anything that is not accurate, please email me and let me know. Because I would correct myself. I would publicly apologize. Because if I can learn something from it, great. But all the data... And trust me, I'm not quick to do a live like this and talk about something that a lot of people will be passionate about because they'll start attacking me because it's playing with their money. And sometimes people can't see the truth when they're following the money. You know what I mean? My favorite book speaks to this. And many people have learned, learned about this. Many of us just get it through wisdom and living life. The truth is the truth. You have to ask yourself, can you sleep at night knowing that you may be recommending a product that may eventually put a person in a position where their health has been compromised? Until the next one. I'm
rid of information Choosing healthy choices Providing you with sound information Bringing balance to hormones And insulin through food With the DFL Teaching you food choices To see you through DFL We're teaching you to eat food Bye.